Good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing well. And today I wanted to talk about the mailbag. Well, not about the mailbag, but a question I got. Oh, I want to start with a comment, though, which is I found very interesting. Let's see. This was from my last video. And it was from John the Whisk. Thank you so much for your comment, John. John writes, it I think it's disgusting how if you're a cancer vlogger, if you're young and pretty, you get loads of subs and views. But if you're older and not stunning, you don't. Happens every time. You deserve just as many subs and views as anyone else. People think you are being kind, but cherry picking who you support and watch based on how they look is grotesque. Okay, so my response first was, ouch. <laughs> I don't know whether to agree with that or be offended. And of course, I'm not offended. It is true. He has a very valid point. I did notice that younger people who get cancer, and that makes me so sad. I mean, young people in their 20s and 30s just shouldn't have cancer. And I, I, still, I still blame processed foods and the way we live. And that's just gotten worse. Okay, kitties are playing. In any case, I, I feel that that's really sad. But I have noticed, you know, it, when you have a YouTube channel, you're encouraged to look at other people in your niche, see what works for them. And I think there is something to it as far as what works for them is they are good looking and young. Doesn't offend me. It's okay. I don't have to be stunning. I think that what they have going for them is, you know, their age. Well, I think there's two factors. I think there's two factors that actually create an a circumstance where someone will get a lot of views and a lot of subs very quickly. One is when someone's actively dying, the, the time is coming. That's not true for me. And I mean, we don't know when, but not yet. And the other is the youth and the looks. It's kind of human nature. But on the flip side, I follow many people that I find unattractive and they're older and they have plenty of subs and views, but they've been on a little bit longer. And so I think that everyone gets there as long as their content is decent. I don't know that that is my biggest priority. I would like to grow my channel. There's no doubt about it, but my priority really is connecting with other people. A lot of you have cancer. And even though you're not on YouTube sharing your journey, you do share a lot of things with me in the comments. And I appreciate that. I can't follow everybody's journey this way, because it's a lot on my chemo P brain. But, you know, I appreciate that you share with me. And I want to share back. That's my priority. And if growing my channel happens to be a side effect, but it doesn't happen for a long time, that's fine because that means I'm still here for a long time. Okay, John, thank you again. I do appreciate it. The delivery was a little harsh, but it's totally fine. Oh, and then by the way, I only have to be stunning for my husband, who's much younger than me, by the way. Okay, now for the mailbag. I got a question from Cherie, who's having a surgery in about a week, and it's a hysterectomy. And whether it's cancer surgery or, you know, any ty type of surgery, really, whether it's just a hysterectomy or whether it's a cancer surgery somewhere, surgery is tough to get through. Um, laparoscopic is obviously a little easier, but 
when I had my hysterectomy, for instance, I also had a debulking and it was complicated. And that took a lot to recover from. And even my surgery from a year ago, that was a lot to recover from too. And it wasn't even successful or complicated. So I did put together some notes that I answered most of them for her. And I think it's important. The first thing is if you know you're, you're going to have a surgery and it's not like just a couple of days away, if you can prepare for it, you're going to recover a lot better. So the first thing on my list is starting to eat right, get a little exercise, even if you're not able to do a lot of movement, you know, if you can even just do hand motions just up and down or, you know, just to get the blood circulating better throughout the body, even the parts that don't move as well anymore. I think that's important. So that, and even in, on YouTube, they have exercises for people with disabilities. They have chair aerobics, that kind of thing, chair yoga. So anything within your abilities to keep your body moving, I think is very important. And eating, I, I would say get rid of the sugars as much as you can, or just cut them in half just to make some kind of difference. Carbs are the enemies when you are needing to be a little bit more healthy going into the surgery regardless of the surgery, even if it's like removing a mole, you know, I mean, that's still a place where your little white blood cells need to go to help heal the injury. And yeah, be as fit as you can. If it is a surgery also that is known for a long recovery, which is going to lead to some weight loss, then bulk up a little bit somehow other <laughs> I'm getting video bombed yeah okay they always do this <laughs> and I just happen to have this hallway exposed anyway they do entertain me so bulk up with either protein shakes or ask your doctor the best way to do that if it's going to lead to some weight loss unless you really needed to lose the weight then you know hey mazel tov Okay, I would recommend preparing for after next. And that would be, let's say you have a favorite book that you've been wanting to read and you haven't gotten to it, get that book and get it in place where you can easily access it. And I'm imagining for most surgeries, especially cancer surgeries, that you're going to maybe you'll be on morphine or something for the first couple of days. So let's talk about this when you're totally co coherent again, what needs to be done. Um, <clears throat> so I would have a favorite book. I would have access to movie rentals, right? So you're going to want it to be a little entertained, laughing, good attitude, if you're up to seeing friends and family or anybody that you absolutely adore who makes you feel good, then you're going to want to see them after the surgery. All right. So there's this healing on a mind, body, and a spirit level that we need to address. It's not always just about the physical things because one is going to affect the other. Just my take. Okay. So next on my list, I found it wonderful to have an extra pillow and whether that was underneath my head or whether it was to spoon and I actually used a half pillow which is a travel pillow that I got at Walmart and so I don't spoon with a body pillow but what I found great about this pillow was that let's say you have an abdominal surgery and maybe laparoscopic is not going to be as severe, but if you have a full on open surgery, you're going to want to hold a pillow against you, against your tummy. When you get up, trust me on this, your muscles are going to hurt and it really does cushion that blow. 
there were there was like a few days I couldn't get up without the pillow. I was well, the first day I had to have the nurse just pull me to get out. Um, but they want you to usually walk, you know, almost right away as long as you're not on morphine, you know. So I would definitely recommend you have an extra pillow that you can use for that. Okay, favorite snack foods. <sighs> I just told you to cut out the carbs. I know the pre pre surgery, but post surgery, although you're not going to really want to eat a whole lot. So you're probably going to be just eating what people give you. And if it's hospital food, you know, not that that's great, but you're not going to be going to McDonald's. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> I would definitely have a little chocolate, pretzels, whatever your thing is. I kind of like the sweet and salty together myself, but whatever you like, I think you should indulge a little bit if it's going to make you happy. Other thing that probably should have been inserted with the pillow was a comfy blanket. Don't have something scratchy. Have something nice and fuzzy and just cozy. And, you know, if it's the heat of the summer, then just have those sheets that you like. I, I really love crispy percale cotton sheets. Chris kind of likes more of a brushed cotton, but I find them a little too warm. So if you're a little bit older, or if you're in menopause, that kind of thing, you know, you might want to be picky about the blankets you have, even if they're in the hospital. But there's a lot of surgeries nowadays that even cancer surgery that you might be going home the same day or the next day. So just have all of this waiting for you when you get home. So the last thing I want to address is humor. Whatever makes you laugh, whether it's in that book, if the book is humorous or if you rent a movie that's humorous or if you have a person that makes you laugh, indulge in that because it's really going to help you. Believe it or not, you know, don't be alone. If you don't have to be, I think that that's harder. And if you have to be alone, you know what? Make sure you've got your phone by you and you can look up a YouTube video or, you know, or an old comedy show. So there you have it. If you are having surgery coming up, take good care of yourself. I'm wishing you all the best, no matter what the surgery, but no matter what the circumstances, I wish you the best and highest good. Okay. I also wanted to mention that the visit with Jen and Nicole was really good. Uh, they decided they didn't want to play the game that they bought because I made them watch a video of it. <laughs> and they were more like, what were we thinking? But we had a nice time. We played some other games a little, little lighter. And I also had made a, along with the bagel spread, I had made an egg and sausage casserole, which was just delicious. And that was the last thing I ever made in that oven. I went to heat it up the next day and the oven wouldn't start. I started smelling gas and I was just like, mm, okay. So something's wrong with it. Chris checked it too. It might be like, I, I think they use spark plugs or something too, but the oven is so old. I mean, I think it's older than the house. I think somebody bought it used. And we've only been here for not even four years, I think. I'd have to check that one. And so we don't even know if the floor is original down under there. So we've never pulled it out. But we decided not to throw good money after bad. I mean, it's just kind of time to get a new one. So... We looked at uh, another range from GE and it was on sale and it's very, it's lovely. It has features that I've wanted forever. It's like, I've been wanting an air fryer. This actually has an air fryer in it. It's convection cooking and, you know, so I'm excited about that. So we ordered that right away and it's coming tomorrow, but in the meantime, the stovetop works. So I think we're going to make some BLTs tonight for dinner and some soup. I 
also, I mean, was it affordable? Eh, it kind of um, squeezed us a little bit out of like cushion that I, I like having, but that's what that cushion's for. I mean, instead of saying, oh no, we're screwed. Um, it's like, okay, we do have a cushion for that, but we'll have to build that one back up. So that's okay. This is the way it goes. This is life, right? It'll be worth it. And in the meantime, I just got um, Social Security in 2025. We'll be getting a raise, 2.5%. The base pay is really, it, it, I would doubt it covers a lot of people's rent or mortgage. I mean, I'm very blessed to have a husband that does work. Not that that's easy for him, you know, with me not working as much because he's got bills. He's got an older car and he's got um, child support for a few more years. I mean, we're getting by, you know, but there's just not a whole lot of extras. I just feel bad because I do know people that do live by themselves and, you know, they turn the heat way down in the winter. They just open windows and don't have air conditioning in the summer. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to get off that soapbox. It upsets me greatly. But 2.5%. It's, it's, it's not good. I think somebody finally got tired. All right, until next time, I want you to have a great day great day. I want you to make every day count. And the next time that I talk to you, uh, we'll just be in a couple of days. So I'm not going anywhere. But since this old gal isn't stunning, go ahead and like and subscribe. It'll do me do the old lady a favor and recommend my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.